2015 is projected to be a strong year for housing and mortgage lenders are looking to jumpstart the market by making it easier for first time home buyers to get a mortgage, allowing down payments as low as 3 percent. But is this too good to be true? And are there downsides to this policy? With more on this, Rogers Healy and Associates real estate owner, Rogers Healy. Welcome back to the show. Good to see you. So um, basically, the government said 3 percent down payment on a Fannie Mae Freddie Mac mortgage is OK by us. What's going to be the impact on the marketplace? I mean, I think it's going to continue to keep us in, at a strong pace, you know, and, and really the adjustment from 5 percent to 3 percent is going to open it up to a lot of people that, you know, really couldn't couldn't afford it otherwise. I want to show folks the difference. If you're looking at a $150,000 house, for example, if you put 5,000, 5% down, your down payment is 7,500 bucks. If you put 3% down, it's 4,500 bucks. It's a very big difference, difference, especially for first time buyers. Do you think we'll finally, finally, finally get some of those millennials into the marketplace? Yeah, I mean, I, I think so for sure. And I think that also protects them, you know, a month or six months into it because people that haven't bought a home before, they don't realize the expenses that come up. Yes. after you own it. And so, you know, saving that gap, you know, you're not going to be able to call the front desk person when your toilet goes out, you got to call a plumber. And well, so having that's that right. 2%, yeah, having that 2% saved, you know, that's going to really help them. So, yeah, these guys have been waiting on the fence to buy, you know, that's going to hopefully encourage them to, to finally make a decision and do something. Well, let me show you some numbers here. So first time home buyers accounted for 33% of home sales in 2014. That is the smallest share since 1987. Think about that. And, you know, you've heard this as well as I have from millennials and other young folks that, look, housing is just not cool enough for us. We might have to move. We don't want to put down roots. We're not the ownership society. We'd rather rent everything. Is that an uh, opinion? Is that a point of view that's likely to persist? Uh, in my opinion, I think it's going to change because if you read, you know, the housing markets continue to grow in large part because the rental market is in, in, is continuing to get more expensive. Right. And so I think there's going to reach a point where most people realize, or people that can afford it, realize that, hey, listen, I, I really am throwing away money. And I think when that starts to happen, it's going to really, you know, make another make another shift to to keep things going the way that they are. Either that or they, or they have babies and they suddenly want to live in something b bigger than a two-bedroom apartment. And, or is, or is yeah. in New York City, everybody's in a one-bedroom apartment. Do you see yeah, 2015 to really be a breakout year here? Or are we going to get capped by higher interest rates, mortgage rates? You know, I think interest rates are going to stay right around where they're at. And as far as a breakout year is concerned, I mean, really the last year and a half, two years have, have broken out. And I think that we'd be lucky, whether it's in Dallas where we're based or Cleveland or New York City, like, like you guys, just to stay the course. And, you know, we're all expecting rates to stay, you know, somewhat where they are now. And uh, we're going to capitalize on them as quick as we can. Well, uh, I'm, I'm following it closely, of course, like all homeowners do. Thanks for coming on the show tonight. Thanks for having me.